Hey, Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I'm in the beautiful mountains of West Virginia, visiting with some of my favorite mushroom-bothering homies. This is Joe and Brenda. They run a really cool business called EB Fungi, and they have all kinds of cool uh, mushroom cultivation supplies and products. Super duper encourage you to check them out. And also, Billy, the Beast of the East, Blevins. If you want to give us a wave, you don't have to give us a body slam, although that does seem like it might be appropriate. Anyway, these fine folks have been teaching me about the wild mushrooms of the mountains uh, of the East Coast. For the last couple of years, I try to come up here and visit, but uh, can't be more grateful. And also just want to encourage you to meet your mushroom internet friends in person. You won't be sorry about that. But uh, anyway, I'm going to talk to you about a parasol mushroom that I think is super cool, but we couldn't all fit in uh, the, the view to make the video together. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you that I have real in the flesh friends that I spend time in the woods with. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Hey, mushroom nerds. Picking back up where I left off about being in the mountains of West Virginia, hunting mushrooms with my friends, and we found this glorious edible parasol mushroom. The scientific name is a bit in flux, and it is a species group. But the best thing to do if you're interested in using a scientific name for this gorgeous group of mushroom species is Macrolepiata prochera group. And uh, this is a mushroom that is, as you can see, very tall and slender. It has a slightly bulbous base and it is a uh, leaf litter decomposer. And so when you find it, usually these are in the woods, but they're like in onesies and twosies. And you'll find them in the deciduous leaf litter often with a little bit of a bulbous base. When you look at the top, you have this gorgeous uh, sort of scaly appearance on top that is also sort of a uh, light fawn brown. The scales do slough off pretty easily and these mushrooms do mature and pop open fairly rapidly. Uh, but they don't get nearly as big and chunky as a much more common and toxic mushroom called the green spored parasol mushroom. So you want to be cautious when collecting these uh, and not collect a green spored parasol chlorophyllum molybdites on accident. I've got other videos about how to identify that mushroom, but in brief, uh, the parasol mushrooms in the Macrolepiata genus, first of all, they favor the woodlands, and your green spored parasols are classic, like, in yards and fields mushrooms, and so that's one big difference between the two. Uh, secondly, this tall, slender fruiting body is quite different from the green spored parasol. Thirdly, uh, you have a similar sort of scaliness, but oftentimes with your uh, edible parasol mushrooms, this brown umbo or nipple at the top is a little more um, persistent. And when I say that, what I mean is the green spored parasol, the uh, scales on it are very curly, and so they can really pop right off very easily. But the stature and the shape of this mushroom are very um, important for telling them apart. And I want to show you what it looks like on the inside. So Macrolepiata mushrooms are very popular worldwide. Um, the first person I discussed it with was actually Italian, and they really love, um, you know, in, in Europe and around the world, different parasol mushroom species are quite popular. But as you can see, it's got really tightly packed gills. It almost looks like, uh, you know, a beautiful, uh, uh, like, array of uh, book pages here. You also have a gorgeous sort of felty ring on the stem. On the top, it's nice and, uh, you know, sort of consistent as a ring and very neat, as you can see, but then you have this little flare with an underbottom uh, and a sort of secondary uh, sort of ragged rim that has a brownish undersurface. Um, but as this mushroom pops open, it will sort of, you know, get a little bit larger, but this is the best shape to collect them in for consumption because, um, you know, mushrooms that have gills, they aren't impossible to cook by any means, but the younger ones, when the gills are more tightly packed, they're a little less inclined to soak up oil and are a little less finicky and temper temperamental, at least for, um, 
the culinarily not disinclined. I love to eat food. I'm just not very good at making food. And so I oftentimes prefer my mushrooms in the easiest possible condition uh, to cook. All right. I want to show you one final thing, which is the interior of the uh, stem. So I'm going to open it up and it pops right open. So as you can tell here, it isn't hollow but it is a little bit um, almost like a fibrous inside here. So it, there's a certain, it reminds me a little bit of the interior of uh, a sort of fleshy plant. But sometimes these mushrooms, especially where I find them, like I find these fairly regularly in the forests um, where I live at lower elevation and you have big fat leaf piles. And sometimes these mushrooms are more hollow and this uh, interior material is um, a lot more scant. And so it isn't necessarily, uh, you know, consistently um, solid on the inside. Uh, but that is another good feature. Again, like Chlorophyllum molybdites, the green spored parasol, it's far more common than your Macrolepiata mushrooms, not just this Macrolepiata Prochera species group. And that, that name is not going to stick. It may even change in the next few weeks from what I hear. There's a rumor going around. We're going to be changing some things. But anyway, uh, you also have large shaggy parasol mushrooms people like to consume, but probably the most common and the one, or at least the one that people observe the most frequently, are those toxic, don't kill you toxic, but still unpleasant green spored parasols. Reason being, they're very numerous and they also are very conspicuous in where they grow. So when you go out into the forest with your mushroom friends, make sure you're looking around for the tall and skinny and scaly things. Another thing I will note is there are some mushrooms in the Lepiata genus, which is different from Macrolepiata, um, and some of them are sort of reddish and they can be uh, dangerous. So you want to be very careful to identify this mushroom correctly. Uh, the best way to do that is, you know, review entries in books, go to iNaturalist and compare what you have with some of the best pictures that you can find. Go on the internet, um, talk with mushroom friends on the internet, and then go meet them uh, in unusual places. I have gone on at great length about this, but it is a delightful mushroom, delightful afternoon. I am so glad to share Macrolepiata Prochera species group, at least provisionally for now. And uh, I hope you find some yourself so that you can admire them and enjoy eating them if you're so inclined.